Hey everybody, it's Scott here for the MXQ Project, and in today's video we are going to be looking at the fantastic Wowato H8 Android DLP Mini Projector. So the Wowato H8 Smart Projector is really a truly amazing piece of kit. It's so good from what I've seen of it so far, and I'm really looking forward to showing you guys it. It's got Android 4.4 KitKat installed on there as well. It's a bit of an older operating system, but it will get the job done. It means you're going to be able to access apps like YouTube, maybe play some games on it as well. But we'll get into that a little bit later on as we move on with the review. It's got 1GB of RAM and 8GB of storage, so you're going to be able to perform some tasks and store some stuff on there as well. It's got an HDMI input. It's also got an AV input. Input. it's got a really good internal speaker on there as well now what's really good about this projector is that it does have 3d technology it means it's 3d enabled so you can grab some active dlp linked glasses and watch a load of great 3D content as well. I've tested this out and I'll be talking about it later on in the video, so I'm really excited to uh, talk about with that with you guys. So let's move straight on with the unboxing now and we will show you this projector in action in just a little while. So we we have the packaging for the H8. It's actually really, really smart packaging and we're really pleased with this. It feels really, really nice. It's kind of got a velvety feel to it and it looks very professionally made and that's always a good start, I think, with these kinds of things because it means that you know, chances are the product's going to be quite nice as well if they've managed to spend the money and the time on the packaging. But let's get this open. And the first thing we come to is the Wawato user manual. And I have to actually say, we normally slate these manuals, but this is actually a really comprehensive manual by uh, Chinese tech standards. So I'm really quite pleased with that. And it does cover kind of everything to do with this projector. But now on to the main article, once we uh, just get rid of this pointless piece of uh, form here. And just slide that out. And here we have it. It's not very big at all, and it weighs next to nothing. It really, really does uh, feel very light to hold, but it's very, very nice. It feels very well made. It's very sturdy, and it just looks really, really smart. There's plenty of ventilation on there as well, so it's not going to heat up too much for you. And on the side here, we have a focus wheel, so it's completely manual focus on this one, which uh, some would say was, uh, is, is better. And we have a power button on the side here as well. Now to the connectivity on the back, we have Ethernet port, the power jack, it also has a HDMI input as well, an AV port, um, and headphone jack as well. And on the top here we have uh, a touchpad, you can't see that, but it does light up when you press it, when the thing's plugged in, and you can control your box via that as well. Next up we have the power lead, pretty standard stuff. It kind of uses a power block, kind of like a laptop or some of their mini PCs that we've reviewed before. And they've sent us an EU one again, unfortunately. But I've got an adapter, so not too much issue, but you can choose when you buy what plug you need for your country. And a HDMI cable as well, just for good measure. And last up, we have a little box here. And it comes with an AV adapter as well, so you could plug an RCA cable into there. That's the uh, yellow, white, and red cables as well. And last but not least, we have the remote control. Pretty simple, not tested this yet, but you've got your main functions on there as well. There's also a 3D button to uh, quickly access the 3D settings as well, which we talked about a little, little bit earlier. But yeah, that's it. So let's power this thing up now and we're gonna see how it performs. So I've loaded up the projector now and this is the uh, Android home screen that you'll get. This will um, only show up if you haven't got an external source plugged in, by the way, just so you know. So if you've got an external source plugged into the HDMI input, then it'll boot straight to that rather than come straight to Android. But this is the Android operating system. I'm just projecting on a cheap 60 inch screen that we bought off eBay and it's really good quality as you can see. Now I'm not sure if the picture quality is going to be great because I'm not using a fantastic lens for this, but you get a good idea. And from what I'm seeing, it's very sharp and it's extremely bright as well. So anyway, let's get on with it. So this is the main Android home screen. You've got everything that you could uh, imagine from a basic launcher here, similar to some TV boxes, but yeah. Um, we've got things like the uh, Wi-Fi settings in here, the Bluetooth, you can access your app drawer. There's the settings tab and you can select the source as well. So here's the wireless network settings there. You've also got the Bluetooth settings here. Just like so, so you can connect any Bluetooth devices such as an external speaker, but not that you would need to because the speaker on this is actually very, very good. But yeah, it's also very silent as well, I should mention. There's no noise coming off this at all, really. It's quieter than a decent laptop. So you've got your app drawer here as well, and you've got all your settings in here. This is your equivalent to Android settings. It's a custom ROM built for this uh, firmware. 
So here's all the system settings where you can manage your applications and your language and all that kind of stuff. You've got your device settings here. So this is where you can come in and set your keystone. If you just uh, see here, I'm not sure how well that's showing up, but I'm going to keep it on automatic because it is quite good. So there's no manual keystone. It's all automatic, but it does work very well. You can also change the aspect ratio to 4.3, 16.10 and 16.9. And I'm going to keep it on 16.9. And you can change it as well here or you know make your own custom aspect ratio to stretch into your screen and you can also come in here and change the power and picture mode as well i'll just cycle through a couple of those there and we have the ethernet settings here and then we've got personalization settings as well and it's also got an ota update facility so we can come in here and i am running the latest version uh, but you can um, come in here to the net update and check if you've got any uh, firmware updates because they do actually release these quite frequently i'm told and has been at least one since I got this. And if we go into the About section here, you can see that it's running Android 4.4.4, and it's got all them other little bits of information as well, letting you know how much memory is being used and how much space you've got left on your um, internal storage. So if we just come out here now, you can also access on the uh, the taskbar here. There's another setting for for the projector settings as well so you can come in here and set all your custom image settings so you've got various picture modes and you've got a user mode as well so you can set your own brightness contrast sharpness saturation all them kinds of things so plenty of settings to play around with in terms of picture quality to get it just right and how you want it and how it looks best for you you can also come in and set the color temperature so again you've got presets and you've got a custom one the user mode so you can set your own and then again, we've got just the aspect ratio settings again as well, just to access for ease of use. We've got sound settings as well. So we've got various different sound modes and there's also an equalizer as well. So you can come in and, you know, set your own custom EQ up. And now here's the 3D section that I mentioned earlier. Now this will allow you to select between a varied, a varied amount of uh, 3D modes. Now I mentioned earlier as well that you will need active shutter glasses for this, but you need ones that have a D, uh, that are DLP link enabled basically. So it means that those glasses are going to be able to sync properly with the projector. I tried these with active glasses from my Panasonic TV and they didn't work. Samsung TV again, didn't work. You need ones that are specifically enabled for DLP link. So you can get these on eBay. We got a couple for uh, maybe $10. And they are very, very cheap and very, very good, but yeah. So in here again, we've got all the 3D modes. So you've got 2D, you've got the Blu-ray mode. So if you've got a 3D Blu-ray plugged in, you can switch to that mode. You've also got the left and right, which is pretty standard, especially if you're viewing online or you've downloaded some 3D movies over and under. Um, you can convert the 3D side-by-side -side image to 2D and again with the over and under ones as well. So you've got all these different options and if we go into the 3D settings here, you can change it so it auto detects as well whether there's a 3D image on the screen. So it should change to the 3D mode automatically. And we have the source options here as well so you can select your source. Home brings you back to the Android menu. AV port and HDMI as well. So very, very simple to use and it all looks very clean and it's very, very user friendly. We've got the browser on here as well, and this works pretty well. So if we just do a Google search here for MXQ, for example, we should bring up the on-screen keyboard. This works very well as well. Especially seeing as it's an older Android operating system, it runs very, very kind of smoothly. There's not much lag. There are some, but, you know, it works as intended, really. There we are, right near the top. So if I just bring up the website now, you'll have to excuse my Wi-Fi connection in here. And of course we've got the App Store as well, and this is Aptoid TV. It's got the Play Store as well, but you can get a load of apps that you can't normally find on Google Play on here. So if we just go ahead and set a game off to download for a bit later, let's try Sonic 2. And we have the app draw here as well, so you get these apps. It's not full of bloatware like you would see on a lot of Android uh, devices. It's got an, uh, a shortcut here to install Kodi as well. I'm not sure why that's been included, but there you go. Of course, you're not going to be able to get the latest Kodi on KitKat unless you download a fork, um, which we do have a tutorial for, and I'll leave the link for that. So if we just uh, take a look at some of these apps, maybe we've gone to YouTube now and just play a couple of videos and see how the video playback gets on. 
So here I am in the YouTube TV app that I downloaded from Aptoid, and I've just loaded up one of our most recent videos. It's another projector review that Matthew has just done, and um, be sure to check that out as well. But yeah, let's just go ahead and click play now and see what kind of video playback we get on Android on this system. So yeah, I don't know if you'll be able to see it as well as I'm seeing it, obviously, because I'm recording on the camera, but it is very crisp, very clear, very sharp, and the colour reproduction is really good, and sound is really good. So absolutely no complaints there. So let's move on now and load up a game on the Android system. So I've loaded up Sonic the Hedgehog. This is the Google Play Android version that Sega reported, and it gets off to a bit of a laggy start, but it does start to kind of pick up, and sometimes restarting it after the first run can fix this issue, I've noticed. But it runs okay once it gets going, but obviously gaming's probably not one of the things you're going to be doing with this, at least Android gaming rather. But yeah, it seems to run okay on games like this. I did try Asphalt as well, but it really wasn't very good. And it only scored about 11,000 on the Antutu benchmark test when I did that. I don't have any clips of that, unfortunately. But yeah, definitely not going to be an Android gaming device at least. Plugging it in via HDMI input with a games console or something, or a PC, definitely. But Android, maybe give gaming a miss. So this is the laptop now plugged into the HDMI input on the projector. You could also use anything that uses a HDMI um, cable as well. So you could plug in a PS4 or Xbox or something. But this is my laptop. Uh, it's just running Windows 7. And I'm just going to demonstrate now that you can easily use the laptop through the HDMI input and it looks great as well. So if I load up YouTube now, I want to cover a little bit about 3D video. So I've loaded up the 3D video and obviously you're not going to be able to see what I can see on the screen in front of you. But I'm going to kind of walk you through it and give an overview of how well the 3D works on this thing. So if I just load up this video now, this is just an example video I found on YouTube. Now what we would do is we would tap on the screen with the mouse or with the touchpad on top to bring up those options again. And it's going to bring up those 3D options again. So I'm going to click left by right, side by side because that's the type of video that it is. And it's going to process that and the 3D image is going to come up on the screen. Now again, you're going to need active shutter glasses to view this. but well, not just any active shutter glasses, you're going to need DLP link ones. And most nowadays are, but you can get them really cheap on eBay. We bought a pair for around $10, that's £4 in the UK on eBay and they're really really good and the 3d image quality is, is really great on this i'm viewing this on a 60 inch screen at the moment but if we just cut, cut to these clips um there's one of the snake here and then coming up there'll be one of a codfish and i view this as well on a, a 140 inches on my wall and it looks absolutely phenomenal it really looks like they're coming out the screen at you it's just like being at the cinema and watching a really good 3d movie it's like these things are coming out and they can almost touch your nose it's that good so yeah absolutely zero complaints with the 3d side of things with this projector it really is phenomenal and you're going to get a really great cinema experience at home if you're into your 3d movies like i am so this is just a short clip of the projector while in use during the daytime now it's late morning here and it's a very very sunny day where i am so i did have the curtains open at first but it was pointless even getting any footage of it because you just couldn't see this thing it wasn't um, bright enough to show up in bright sunlight i'm afraid i didn't expect anything more than that to be completely honest but with the curtains drawn off you've got blinds drawn drawn then you're going to be able to use this okay it's obviously not going to be as good as when you're in the dark but for daytime use for just casual use you're going to be all right with it i think as long as it's not too sunny and you can get those curtains off line shut so I think we're just going to wrap this review up here, really, because there's not much else I can say about this device. I'm really, really in love with this piece of kit. It's an amazing, amazing projector, and I think that it's the best one that I have reviewed so far. And it just continues to amaze me, really. It's so bright, and it's so lightweight. It's so small and quiet, and it just works really, really well. Yes, Android that's installed on it is only 4.4 KitKat, and it is an older operating system, and that brings with it a lot of limitations these days, such as not being able to use the latest code and certain apps and also it's not DRM supported so you're not going to be able to get HD Netflix on the Android on it but I don't think that you should be buying this projector to solely use Android you would benefit greatly from hooking up another TV box or another source into this projector and it is so good it can project up to 300 inches now I don't have a wall or screen big enough to test that but I've had it at around 140, 150 or 160 inches on my back wall and it looks absolutely phenomenal. It's crisp, it's clear. The HD images, although only 720p, look absolutely amazing on it. I've had my laptop hooked up to this quite a lot and watched Netflix through it just on an evening time 
and it just really really continues to blow me away i really really like this projector and it gets a solid 10 out of 10 for me to be completely honest the design's great it's very small very lightweight but it's also very quiet there is some heating up if you've been using it extensively but it's not too bad at all it really really is that good so i think we're going to leave it there guys just remember as well also if you want to use it for the 3d you need those 3D DLP link glasses and don't make the mistake we did of trying to use glasses from a 3D TV with it. Some may work on the uh, kind of unbranded or cheaper 3D TVs, but the higher brand ones such as Panasonic and Sony and Samsung, they're not going to work. You need DLP link enabled active structure glasses for that. But yeah, I think we're going to leave it there for now, guys. I really hope you've enjoyed this review. So if you did like it, give me a like, a big thumbs up. If you didn't like it, you know what to do as well. Come and chat to me in the comments. Come and find me on Twitter at MXQ Project. Come and visit the website, mxqproject.com. We've got the Facebook group as well. Link will be in the description. Great bunch of people on there. Very knowledgeable, very friendly. Come and ask any questions. And all that's left to say is I've been Scott. You have been watching the MXQ Project. And we shall see you in the next video.